in an Anan Hidat Hidatas breaks it down. He talks about that immature, very socially limited Elon Musk, the billionaire, and how bad a week he's had last week. Donald Trump, another pur- pur- purportedly billionaire. We know he really isn't. Bad week that he had. The guy who runs FTX and collapsed it uh, from you know 30-something billion dollars just went up into the air. Another billionaire, you know, and uh, and then of course we have the one and only Jeff Bezos, who made a big splash. I'm giving away a hundred billion dollars to Dolly Parton. How after having had given away a hundred billion dollars to uh, to two other Andres uh, uh, Cook, Andres, and also uh, you know the the former guy that worked for I can never remember his name. Anyhow, that's not important. And he gave away a lot of money. Just to then, after announce, I am laying off 10,000 people. You know, I am on this billionaire kick because I billionaires have no right to exist because nobody makes a billion dollars. They, there's nobody whose worth is a billion dollars in today's current value of our money. This is all on the backs of others. And it is so hard to get across to people that it's a choice that we've made to allow others to manipulate us in such a manner that they can use our excess labor, excess worth, and just take it, amass it, and think that, well, I made it. I am the one who made this money. We have to reframe uh, people's minds into understanding that that's not their money. But anyhow, listen to Anan Hirad Hiradas, and then we'll go ahead and uh, take it on the other side. Anand's latest piece for the New York Times is titled, This Week, Billionaires Made a Strong Case for Abolishing Themselves. Uh, Anand, you write this in part, quote, Elon Musk is running Twitter into the ground with much of the company's staff fired or quitting, outages spiking, and everyone on my timeline hurrying to tell the app the things they have been meaning to say before it departs. Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, made a big splash when CNN released an interview in which he announced he was giving the great bulk of his more than 120 billion dollar fortune away just minutes after his philanthropy announcement on cnn news broke amazon would be laying off thousands of workers then of course there was sam bankman fried the disgraced crypto kingpin whose spectacular downfall along with that of ftx the company he founded caused 32 billion dollars to disappear much of it belonged to hundreds of thousands of regular people finally of course This week, there was Donald Trump. On Tuesday night, he addressed a crowded room at Mar-a-Lago and, as expected, announced he was going to run for president again. So, Anand, I'll let you flesh out the case a little bit here. You know, uh, first of all, I I think something we often forget as Americans is that billionaires exist as a class of people who have that much money at our collective pleasure. Right? It is a policy choice to allow some people to accumulate that much money, hundreds of billions of dollars in the case of people in the United States, before everybody has the chance to live with dignity, right? Other countries make that choice very differently. We have chosen historically to heavily prioritize having billionaires over having dignity for all people. And that's a choice I would just start by saying that we could make differently in the future. And so I wrote the piece to try to remind people uh, of that choice we have. And last week was remarkable. I mean, I've written about billionaires for years and talked about uh, these issues on the show. But it was hard to imagine a week uh, when there were so many spectacular reminders of the way in which this kind of billionaire class is is inconsistent with democracy as we live it. Elon Musk uh, is, is, you know, is a sort of adolescent in his 50s. Everybody can see that. I don't think anybody would say Elon Musk is a normal 51-year-old man um, who has bought this platform that he himself calls the global town square, certainly functions, has that kind of social importance. And because of what is so evidently his own feeble limitations. He's just not, he's a limited man. His limitations become all of our problem. They ramify into all of our lives. They start to, you know, un, uh, unleash anti-Semitism because he wants Kanye back on the platform. And Kanye announces Shalom when he comes back after his, his big uh, anti-Semitism benders in recent years. He brings back Donald Trump, who's, who's kind of unleashed 
the 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 white nationalist demons in this country uh, on that platform and off in ways that are obviously have caused us to come to the brink of losing our democracy. Elon Musk's big idea is let's bring him back. He's gutted the company. Photos of him from the company at a so-called code meeting show that there's basically like no women left working around him. It's just a bu- big sausage fest in there working, you know, in the team that he has remaining around him. Um, and then, you know, the rest of the week was was Jeff Bezos doing this big song and dance about philanthropy while then an hour later, his company lays off thousands of people, thousands of people right before Thanksgiving, going home, having to tell their kids, mommy or daddy doesn't have a job anymore because of this guy who's apparently giving money away uh, to p- help people, I guess, like us who don't have jobs. Uh, you have Sam Bankman Freed, an incredible example of someone who had these pretend, he wasn't even into philanthropy in this moment. He was still just making money and telling us that simply the way he was making money was going to help all of us. He was going to smash the system, man. He was going to bring down the big banks and he was going to create this new era of, of finance for everyone. You could all get in on the crypto thing. And he just lost everyone's money. He makes the big banks look good by comparison. And then, of course, Trump, um, who I always have appreciated. He's not even necessarily an actual billionaire, but I've always appreciated the nakedness. Unlike some of these other guys, he doesn't do a very good job of pretending that he's for the public benefit. Uh, he certainly ran on a campaign of smashing the system in 2016, but but he is very nakedly revealing what I think is true of this group in general, which is that their existence as as billionaires is sort of antithetical to our flourishing as a democracy. He hits the nail on the head. Folks, this is, we have been trained, we have been indoctrinated from birth that there was something special about these guys, the corporate titans, the billionaires, etc., who've amassed all this money. I promise you, this is not about wealth envy. This is not about envying the rich at all. Uh, again, this is about having an, a fraudulent economic system. It's legal because that's the laws that we pass, but a fraudulent economic system that takes away your worth, take away your income, and concentrates it to a few, and then they go out and say, we've earned this, and we don't, you, we don't want to pay taxes to, you know, we are paying enough taxes as it is already. And it, a lot of people kind of believe that because in reality, they pay more taxes than we do. But that is because they stole all our money, and that tax that they're paying is just given back. Look, we've discussed this subject a whole lot of times, and when one is indoctrinated from birth, it's hard to reprogram one's mind. I had to reprogram my mind to understand it. And let me tell you, uh, it's a club that you have to be invited to, but you don't have to be invited into one that does make quite a bit of money. And I can, I can tell you, folks, we have to be cognizant of what's going on because it's unsustainable. And if we don't do and start doing uh, what it takes to solve this problem now, the pitchforks are coming. And the problem with when the pitchforks come is they won't first be getting the billionaire class or whatever. It's going to be that initial fight among the peons that then escalates. So, folks, let's let's get with the program. Let's make sure to start passing policies that gets back all that money that was taken on our backs. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.